In the National Policy Institute held its annual conference in the nation's capital. Their movement is broadly referred to as alt-right, but the positions they embrace are white nationalist supremacists, and many say absolutely racist. Unlike past gatherings, this meeting was energized by the election of Donald Trump. Here is some of what took place at the conference this weekend. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> No one will honor us for losing gracefully. No one mourns the great crimes committed against us. For us, it is conquer or die. To be white is to be a striver, a crusader, an explorer, and a conqueror. We build, we produce, we go upward. And we recognize the central lie of American race relations. We don't exploit other groups. We we don't gain anything from their presence. They need us and not the other way around. We are not meant to live in shame and weakness and disgrace. We were not meant to beg for moral validation from some of the most despicable creatures to ever populate the planet. We were meant to overcome, overcome all of it, because that is natural and normal for us. America was, until this past generation, a white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. It is our creation. It is our inheritance. And it belongs to us. Uh, here's what President-elect Trump's staff had t tweeted in response to that controversial video. Quote, President-elect Trump has continued to, de to denounce racism of any kind, and he was elected because he will be a leader for every American. To think otherwise is a complete misrepresentation of the movement that united Americans from all backgrounds. There were protesters outside of the conference, and the U.S. Holocaust Museum issued a statement that said, in part, quote, Richard Spencer, the leader of the National Policy Institute, made several direct and indirect references to Jews and other minorities often alluding to Nazism, the targeting of Jews was central to Nazi racist ideology. The Germans attempted to kill every Jewish man, woman, and child they could find. Nazi racism extended to other groups. By the end of World War II, the Germans and the collaborators had murdered six million Jews and millions of other innocent civilians, many of whom were targeted for racial reasons. The Holocaust did not begin with killing, it began with words. The museum calls on all American citizens, our religious and civic leaders, and the leadership of all branches of the government to confront racist thinking and divisive 
hateful speech. Joining us right now is Richard Spencer, uh, who they were just referring to. So Richard, we had you previously on TV One. Uh, have you back. First and foremost, uh, when you said despicable creatures, who were you talking about? Uh, I was talking about the lying media that have actually been lying about me for the last 24 hours. So we say lying CNN, about you, what does that mean? CNN claimed that I questioned whether Jews were people and things like that. If you, we, uh, we published the text of my speech. I did nothing of the kind. They're doing a wild exaggeration. Uh, they, they, they're worrying about fake news. They're engaging in fake news about me. So wh why... Heil Hitler there. Why Why the Nazi references? I, why? No one said Heil Hitler. No, first of all, when we saw the video there, there were individuals there who were doing that. We've seen photos uh, as well of individuals at that particular conference uh, who were using the Nazi salute. Do, but, do, there's a lot of exuberance in, in events like this. There's also a lot of irony. Uh, the fact is... The, or the Nazi salute? Yeah, in, in the sense when, it, when it's done in the context of the alt-right, it's done in a spirit of fun Why? and exuberance. But, 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 but this is America. Because whenever, you, whenever anyone sticks up for European identity, whenever they say, I want to stick up for us, for our people, they're always called a collection of names, Nazi, KKK, Southern Confederate, etc. I think a lot of people just want to throw it back in, those, in their enemies' faces. But, 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 totally but that's, natural. But, but, so it's totally natural for Americans to use a Nazi salute when, when, when one second, when Americans, when America fought against the Nazis, fought against uh, what they were all about, why would you, so why would you salute, why would you appreciate that? Why, why would you not say, no, this is America. You don't do that in America. Uh, again, it's a moment of exuberance. No, 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 no. You use exuberance. I don't need, look, I can't police everyone no, I, I, no, I, no, I, at a conference. No, 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 no. What you can say, here's, here's the question. Are you an American? Yes, I'm an American Are you proud citizen. to be an American? Yes, I'm a proud citizen. Do you believe that America should have beaten Nazi Germany in World War II? I wish that we had avoided that conflict. No, no, no you answered my question. You answered my question. Should I, America I, have I beaten war? You said we should have avoided it. Should America have beaten back Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler in World War II. One, once the United States was in the war, yes, absolutely, okay. we have to win it. So if we want it and we beat back Nazi Germany, why would you even say, well, in exuberance people do that? Why would you not say, as an American, that is not what we do in America? I, I, what you're saying is just logically incoherent. I mean, you know, we're talking about a second world war, and therefore you can't do something and, and fun and jest. So, I mean, so, 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 you, also, so, so you believe like five so, people so, or something? No, 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 actually, this, this uh, hold on one second. Five on. people? Shelly, play the video again. Play the video. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> That's not five people. That's more. That's far more than five people. And and but I'm trying to understand why would you excuse that, as as if that's no big deal. Oh, it's just it's just sort of in fun. That I mean that's that that's offensive I, to Americans. That's offensive to American soldiers. That's offensive to World War II veterans who actually fought in that war. H how do you say, oh, that's exuberance? Because that's what it was, and it's nothing more than that. This is what I would say: is that are there any World War II veterans in your family? Yes, actually, okay. both of my grandfathers. And both of your grandfathers. Yes. Would your grandfather say, oh, that's exuberance? Yes. Really? Yeah. Right. So, you, so your grandfather wouldn't say, I fought against that. I, I fought where that's not done in America. No. So, I, don't, I don't think so, most, most people are like this. It's actually just the liberal media that's in no, it. No, actually, collective freak out. No, actually, this. no, it's not a question of collective freak out. If somebody wants to call themselves an American, they would then say, no, that's not American. So, uh, so I also want to ask you this but I'll, here. I'll actually agree. I'll, give you, I'll, I'll find some common ground here. Uh, I do think that the alt-right, we've gone from being a movement that was not connected to the political mainstream, not, collect, not connected to the political fray. We now are. People are paying attention to us. People are looking at us. And so I actually, I actually say, yes, uh, we need to start uh, uh, maybe knock some of that stuff off. We need we may, need to may, think maybe? of our, we need maybe? to think of our, we need to think of ourselves as a mainstream movement that's going to reach people because we do have that power. Okay, so here's the call. Are you white nationalist? Uh, I don't use the term white nationalist. I use the I like the term all right first off, and I also like the term identitarian because it gets at what I am and what I believe. And what is that? Identity is at the heart of my ideology. So and what's that identity? Add, yeah. I, race is a foundation of that identity, undoubtedly. Now, you, now, you know, ra I mean, race is simply a creation of mankind. That's a construct. It doesn't exist. I mean, my who line is, uh, no, I know who I am. First of all, I'm Roland Martin. I'm a man. 
Okay. I'm a man. Do you first. identify as a black man? Oh, first of all, I identify as a man. Okay. I identify what is as that? a man. I, I, I no, actually, it's not sexist because if a person is a woman, identifies as a woman. Okay. So I'm a man. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Are you a Christian? Uh, I'm a cultural Christian. Yeah. What the hell is that? Well, you know, I many of us struggle with faith, but uh, but no, I, no, I'm no, part of a Christian. Hold on, hold on. You, can't oh. yourself, you can't call yourself you can't call yourself a cultural Christian and then say I struggle with faith. I, the, have you professed that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Uh, no, I I, well, I have in my life. I, I don't. I mean, look, let's, is this an no, imposition no, no. on me? No, 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 I mean, no, actually, no, it's an interview. But, but see, when somebody tells me they are Christian, and I, I again, said I'm have, culturally Christian. W what is culturally Christian? I, I grew up in a Christian background. I resonate with Christianity and so on. Okay, I'm going to ask again. Have you professed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I, I have in my life, yes. Okay, so that means that you're a Christian. So how is it that with what you espouse, how do you find that to be uh, compatible with Christian ideals? Most Christians throughout world history agreed with me that identity matters and that race is real and that they're part of an extended family. Well, it's it, only this, well, my, this tiny slice of world history, like post-1965, that everyone thinks that Christianity is incompatible with identity. Well, actually, I do not well, actually that. if you can use world history, there were people who actually used Christianity to justify slavery and the enslavement yeah. of people who look like me. Uh, and so, so if, why are if, you if, a Christian? Uh, why, am I, why am I a Christian? Uh, because those people actually were false Christians. Those people mm. were fake Christians. Those people probably were cultural Christians, where they somehow uh, allowed culture to inform their faith as opposed to their faith informing their culture. But, mm. but, I, but, but I ask you this. I go back to the question I asked you. For most if of that, Christian history, there was feudalism, there was serfdom, there was slavery, there was right, identity, right. there was nationalism. And, and those all of these people uh, unchristian, but you no, are No, 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 no. Those are people who actually, uh, who chose to pimp the Bible as opposed to actually believe in exactly so what Jesus Christ talked about. Most all of Christians throughout world history were pimps. No, no, no. no. you no, no, are no, a true Christian. No, no. What, what I'm saying is this here. As a Christian, I believe in the Word mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to uh, this false nonsense uh, that most of those folks were. But yeah, but they, they were also fake Christians because they used the Word to actually enslave people. I'm but, so glad but, we but, reached but, true Christianity. Well, no, no, well, well, first in of all, 2016. Well, first of all, first of all, you barely identify as one. So you say you cultural. You dance around it. And I'm, I'm, being, I'm it's, being honest. It's around it. No, I got Isn't you. That a value? I got you. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not going to lie to you. No, no, that's fine. But I still got to go back to this here. So, you, so are you a white supremacist? No, I'm not a white supremacist. Absolutely, the white supremacy means that a white person would want to rule of, over other people. So you don't want to rule over other people. I absolutely do not. Well, uh, what, we've had white supremacy in our past. Whether you think of uh, imperialism slavery, colonialism, that's been a disaster. So no, I don't want to go back to that. So what are you trying to go, so what are you saying? Because you, in your video you said, uh, we don't need them, they need us. Who's they? Yes. Who's they? Uh, the white people ultimately don't need other races in order to succeed, in order to be ourselves. Absolutely not. So how do you think America became the greatest economic uh, nation without... Not uh, through black people. Oh, it wasn't? It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't because of free labor? Uh, are you talking about slavery? No, I'm talking about slavery and also what happened after slavery, uh, which Douglas Blackman talked about, uh, slavery by another name. So I'm trying to understand, when you say didn't need it, how do you think America became the, economy, the greatest economy that it did? How do you think that happened? Through the genius of Europeans. Uh, how was the genius of Europeans when the fact of the matter is it was actually King Cotton that supplied the economic means for America to do so? And that, that was a result, a result of free labor from black people. Look, the, the whole point here is that who creates these systems? Who creates these business models and businesses? Slavery and was a business model? Well, yes, it was a business model, and, yeah. And, and, and was that one that you like or dislike? I dislike. You dislike yeah, I would. I absolutely reject it. Okay, yeah. so, but you deny the reality, though, no, uh, that, what that that's, what that create, that's what allowed America to become uh, the economic power because America supplied 91% of the world's cotton. And so as a result of that, that's how America was able to fund the Industrial Revolution. It was because of free labor from black people. The Industrial Revolution originated in Britain and it originated in, in way the countryside of Britain no, 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 where no. there were I absolutely said, no slaves. I said the money generated from right. that. But I asked you again, I asked you again, okay? You said we don't need anybody else. No. But, but the reality is America history proves you wrong. The fact of the matter is, there is no great America. You don't, you don't, you can't see here and talk about that greatness without other people making that happen. We could have figured out another way to pick cotton. Who? I mean, the white people could have figured out another way to pick cotton. Y'all tried that, didn't work. 
Yeah, I, I mean, which we what, do it now. We've what, done what, it previously. What, 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 I don't know what books you read, uh, but uh, no, that's actually not what happened. But you say y'all would have figured it out, but you didn't. Look, African slavery was an absolute disaster, socially and morally. I reject it. Okay? In terms of the 20th century, when America rose as a geopolitical power, when, the, when we had the greatest economy in the world and so on, that has nothing to do with slavery. So you say, so, so you say we, don't, we don't need anybody else. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, people of color not going anywhere. So, so, so what is your vision for America? That uh, is, is white land and the rest of us can leave? I think that white people, Europeans, formed the core of American identity. So why don't you go back to Europe? Europe. You keep saying I Europeans. Just said, I just said, you a European is, you, being a European isn't just a plot of land. Being a European is about blood and spirit. These people formed the core of American identity. What it means to be American it is ultimately what it means to be a white person here. How so? Because, we, because, how so? because we Dr. are Dr. essential. Because the reality is here. Dr. King talked about that. Was, I would have maintained that. that. It, it, black, it, Dr. King talked about it was black people who actually made America live up to the ideals that they wrote on the sheet of paper, that there were white, that there were white Americans uh, who talked about, oh, uh, we want uh, the nation to be this, when the reality is, uh, that's not what they were living up to. It was, it, was Af it was black folks who made that a reality when it came to the Constitution. When you say all men are created equal, uh, we had a nation where it wasn't all men are created equal. Uh I myself am critical of the Founding Fathers, however, clearly they but, did not believe in multiracial equality. Clearly, if you look at the and, first... And you, and you agree with that? I, yes, I agree with that. So, I do so, not believe so, that everyone's so, equal. So you don't believe in multiracial equality? No. I mean, I don't think anyone does, actually. I mean, do, do you really think that all people are equal in talents and identity that's, that's and that, No, no, that, 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 that's not what that means. The same. We no, 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 no. When you say all people are created equal, that means that the moment you are born, uh, we're going to treat you in the same way as we treat everybody else. Now, what you do with your life, what you do with your talents is different. Uh, there are many areas, I'm quite sure, I'm far more talented than you. It yes. doesn't mean that you don't have talent, but what it means is that when you are born, we're going to be treated as equals, equal American, equal American. So in your worldview, are you saying white folks should be treated as a greater American than if you're black or Latino or Asian or Native American? At this point, I want white people to have the same rights that all other people do. The like, fact what, is, what all, rights that white folks don't have? all institutions, in, in terms of legal rights, yes, everyone has the same thing. In terms of what institutions are actually doing, absolutely no. White people do not have the rights of minorities. How so? In what? I'll, I'll, in what? I'll go into it. In terms of federal hiring, absolutely. Federal hiring is geared towards not hiring more white men. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, Every, stop. Hold on. Say it again. Federal hiring. Let me ask a question. How many white men in the United States Senate? Uh, that's not federal hiring. No, 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 no. Ask, I ask my question. How many white men in the United States Senate? I don't know the exact number. It's More than 80%. Majority. Sure. Okay. How many white staffers? See, you said hiring. That's hiring, correct? Right. How many white staffers in Congress? Uh, a lot. I a lot. Define a lot. I, I, don't, I don't know. These it's it's in, in, in excess of 80%. Okay. So, please show if me how. Look at, no, 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 no. That's, that's federal hiring. Right. It's federal hiring. So, are, so are you saying? No, 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 numbers. no. Hold up. That, but no, no. That's federal hiring. So I'm trying to understand something here. You said like all of a sudden, oh my God, it's, it's so rough for us. Do you, do you so think are you, that are, affirmative action is not at play in federal hiring? I, I, actually, actually, hold up. I, actually, every wait a minute. Department on down. Actually, I mean, give me a break. Actually, do you do you know what the greatest affirmative action policy was in this country? Slavery? No, no, that, no, that wasn't affirmative action. Okay. That was free labor. The great affirmative action policy in America was the GI Bill. And do you know who benefited from the GI Bill? White people. Your grandfathers. Yes. Do you know who did not benefit from the GI Bill? The same black folks who fought alongside in World War II who also bled for this country and when they came back. So when you talk about affirmative action, <clears throat> that is the greatest affirmative action bill in the history of America. Do you know who has benefited greater from affirmative action policies? First of all, who, who created affirmative action? Uh, white people, probably. Okay, Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, right. 1969, Arthur Fletcher was there as well. Who is the greatest beneficiary of affirmative action? The greatest beneficiary? Of affirmative I would say action. African American. You know, that's a lie. Okay. Is your, do you have a girlfriend or wife? Uh, yes. Is she white? Yes. She's the greatest beneficiary of affirmative action. White women have benefited more from affirmative action than anybody else in America. Getting that's very a fact. sexist here, Martin. No, 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 it's not sexist. Poland's that's people. a fact. So the fact is, so when you say affirmative action, white folks. That no, 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 might no. be the case. No, no, it's, it's not might. White women have benefited from affirmative action more than any other group. 
I'll go so, with so, you. So, no, no, no. So when you're saying, oh, my goodness, affirmative action, why should not be getting hired in the federal government? That's a lie. Oh, that's fine. Look, this is what I'm saying. In terms, let's look at Silicon Valley. Every spring, these big companies, Apple, Google, Facebook, will release diversity reports. And they will basically say, we are we are focused well, on hold, not hiring white men. Really? Yes. Hold on one look second. Look at all the diversity. Hold, 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 I'll stay right there. Hold on one second. I'm going to go to a break. See, here's the problem, Richard. This is the problem when you're a smart black man who can read. Mm -hmm. Have you seen their diversity numbers? Uh, yes, whites really? are underrepresented okay, in this corporation. All right, when we come back, uh, we're going to do a fact check for Richard uh, here when it comes to uh, Silicon Valley. Because, see, as y'all know, here on TV One, Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. has been talking about Silicon Valley. I've been right there covering this for the last 24 months. Uh, we're going to give him the facts when we come back uh, right here at News 1 Now TV One. All right, folks, back with our guest, Richard Spencer, president of the National Policy Institute. Says he identifies with the alt-right. Many of us say he's a white nationalist. Richard, we talked about Silicon Valley. According to this report right here from the uh, federal government, top 25, top 75 Silicon Valley tech firms. Whites, 47% of the workforce. Asian Americans, 41%. Hispanics, 6%. African Americans, 3%. Now, what you women Thank make you up? What, no, no, no. So, what, so what you're saying is we don't have enough white people in Silicon Valley? No, what I'm saying is white people. Those numbers that you just read reveal that white people are underrepresented as a percentage in Silicon in the Valley popu in the population in Silicon Valley. So, exactly so, what I so said. are white are white people underrepresented when it comes to Fortune 500 CEOs? Uh, no, not in terms of CEOs. Okay, are white people unrepresented when it comes to a, bo a board of directors members of Fortune 500 CEOs? Uh, probably not. Of white people are underrepresented when it comes yeah. to corporate offices of Fortune 500 CEOs. This is called so, moving so, no, no, the no, 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 it's not. No, no, I'm, I'm no. Here's the deal. <laughs> what you're saying is this here. Okay, in this sector, oh my God, we only have 47 percent of white people. We need. So what do you want? You want 70, 80, 90? No, what I'm saying is that these corporations, by their own explicit admission, are trying to hire less white people and less How? white men. Uh, so you're they saying, release so, reports. So, so are you saying they're not hiring uh, people who are the smartest? Uh, no, I don't think they're hiring people so, so, merely so, because they're so, the smartest. So, so you're upset that you're upset. It, you know, no, no, no. I'm trying to understand. You're upset that 47 percent of white people work in Silicon Valley, but you have no problem with 90 percent of the Fortune 500 CEOs being white. I see what you're saying. No, no, no. I'm, I'm asking yes or no. Are, are you? Do you like that? Do you? Do you like and accept that 90 percent, 80 plus percent of Fortune 500 CEOs are white men? Look. Are you cool with that? Uh, yeah. Do you prefer that? Sure. Do you so you prefer, so what what you're saying is what you want is you want whites being majority in control of every sector in America. What I want, look, I'm I, I'm not an economic thinker in terms of politics. What I want are politicians similar to Donald Trump who really want to protect the people here, who don't think just in terms so of say the global population. Who's the people? Who's the people? Who are the people? Right. This is whites are still a majority in no, this no, country. No, 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 no. But, but, you said, secondly, but you said the people. So he's black. She's black. He's white. He's white. I'm black. Latino. Are we in the people? Yes, clearly you are citizens of this country. Okay, so 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 if we're in the people, then why can't we also have jobs? I don't. I I care about the country itself, but I really care about European Americans. Okay, but in but, all but, of these institutions, but, but, these institutions are dedicated to discriminating how? against people like how, me. How, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, their hold own how, 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 how? They are. If if whites if whites are dominating jobs in banking, if whites are dominating jobs on Wall Street, if whites are dominating hedge funds, if whites are dominating NFL owners and NBA owners, if whites are dominating the major sectors, how in the world can you somehow say, oh my God, it's rough for us white people out here? It's not. How, if you're saying that, how are whites dominating the number of jobs on Capitol Hill? How are whites dominating the number of jobs in the White House? How are whites dominating jobs all across America? And you're saying it's not enough white people, so stop hiring those minorities. They don't need jobs. We got to make sure us white people keep getting jobs. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't surprise me at all that whites succeed. 
Uh, we have succeeded throughout the centuries. We are a people of great genius and ambition. So none of that surprises me. In terms of looking at all of these CEOs, a lot of these are older people. They're from a generation with, with, with a very, they come from a generation with a very different population. What I'm more worried about right now are younger people. These institutions are actively, explicitly trying to discriminate against them in terms of hiring. How? It's unfair. How? I don't like it. But even worse, How? this is not, we, it's, this is moving towards a country that is not going to be the country that we want. Well, no, 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 no. You say, we say the country that we want. I'm still trying to understand because you, you still haven't answered my question. Because but, Europeans build societies that everyone wants to come to, to be honest. Okay. Where are the Syrian refugees? Hold on, you said built invading, it. Where are they going? Who, 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 they're who, going to Central Europe. They're going to built. Western Europe. You said built. Yes. Who, who, who built the railroads in America allow for us to have expansion out west. Who built that? Yes, I'm a lot of Chinese people. No, no, like, you, no you said you no the operative word there was built. Built. Yeah. Who built okay Who the, designed them? No, Who no, had the genius wait, 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 to imagine wait, wait, railroads? Wait, wait, Europeans. Wait, wait, the, the, the genius to imagine railroads. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know, but see but you said Are built. there railroads no, no, in no. Africa? You, you said yes. You said built. Why? You said because you of said us. Hold up. you said for, okay, first of all That uh, is absolutely for, true. First of all, you know first of all the greatest genius in when it came to the building of the pyramids, which you would do you know what Those they are they, white people, by the way. Who are white people? The uh, Egyptians are not African. I'm sorry. Do you know where Egypt is? Yes, it's in Where? North Africa. Which... Okay, stop, stop. You stop, stop right there. You just said th that you said the Egyptians are, are not African. Are white South Africans no, African? No, wait, wait. Yes, they, they are African. See, okay, okay, to be African means you come from the continent of Africa. So if you come from the continent of Africa, that's who you are. I'm... So that means you're an African. So, and you, and you, know, you do know, Don, do you also deny science that man originated from Africa? Or do you say that's, that's false science? Uh, what are you talking about? I mean, what, uh, what are you referring I'm, I'm to? I'm talking science. archaeology. I'm talking biology. I'm talking science in terms of the, the where did man originate? Where, scientists. Why scientists? Egypt was an amazing no, no, civilization. No, 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 it was it, not created no. by black Africans. I'm who, sorry. It wasn't? Who, who created it? Uh, people who are white. How, okay, how, how are people... You can, look no, at, no, no, you how, can how, actually look at how, art and they differentiate no, no, between races. No, no, i got to ask you a question. How do you... From do, ancient do, Egypt do, and do, art. Do, do, you do know those were black people. You do know... Hey, you, you, you do know from science science, you can't get black from white, you can get white from black. You do know when it comes to evolution, what? when it comes... Oh, I see what you're saying. Do you, you never studied science? I, I see what you're... Yes, I have. No, so, but... but, but I, I mean, I'm but, not a scientist, but, but, but are man, you? But man originated in Africa. D yes or no? Th that is a consensus, yes. Okay, that, so if, man, Africa, so if man originated in Africa, mm -hmm. which means that they were Africans, then all of a sudden, when you talk about uh, the uh, amazing works of the Egyptians, they were people of color. I know that's a little rough for you to handle, but I know you want to hold on to that somehow thinking whites built the pyramids, but I'm trying to understand. Yeah, we did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, because first of all, they were building things in Egypt while white Europeans were still in caves. Uh, that's a that's, fact. That is a, the, that's I've, a fact. Okay, sure. I, but I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still go back to. So what you, so you, you, you insist that somehow uh, that uh, whites are not getting jobs in America and in, 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 in this rough. Are you afraid of competition? I, I, I am not afraid of competition. Competition can be good. That being said, are you what's afraid great? To compete? Are you, are you I think actually. To hold on, hold on. Are you afraid of some other television station beating you? No. I mean. You're not. Okay, you know why? Well, no, you know why? Because you're confident. That's no, no, great. no, no. no, so I just, no, no, not just confident. Cause see, I have skill set. I understand what I do. See, but what you're telling right, me that is sounds see, like confidence. No, 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 no. What, what you're telling me is this here. You, Richard, here's what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. And I'm not a psychologist. Can I finish my point? But you're afraid. You you are afraid that you now are going to have to compete. What you you've had you've had such a head start. You've had an eighty yard head start in a hundred meter dash, and now you're upset that people are catching up. Sure. Why are you so afraid? Sure, everyone likes to win. But to be honest, in terms of Donald, what, what's great about Donald Trump is that he hasn't been saying, oh, th this is great global competition for all Americans, let's do it. No, he's actually said, I care about my people first. I Who's care my about. People? Uh, I, he, he's referring to all Americans. When he says, my people first, America first, what he's saying is that he is going to help the people of this country first. But you don't he's want that. He's not going to throw them out to the wind. But you don't want that. You don't, you don't want... I, I just, you, yes, I do. I no, just so, so, like so, so you don't mind 
blacks and Hispanics and Asians, Native Americans, getting jobs, doing well. You don't mind that? Of course I don't mind that. Okay, but, but, but you're so concerned that, 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 oh my God, whites are not getting hired when that's not true. It's it, clearly whites are getting hired. My claim is that effectively every major institution in this country, from governmental institutions to uh, uh, corporations, are discriminating against how? whites and white when you, men. When you're majority white, they explicitly you're, they, they literally, talk about how? it. If okay, if you so, believe so, so, if you uh, believe so, race doesn't uh, matter and that we're all equal and so on, then the Apple Corporation b should be 65 percent white. In terms, it's it not. Up. Hold up. Hold up. You say it should be 65% white, but if Apple is saying it's, that we that we that if, if, if are Apple, tremendously overrepresented. If, if because maybe if Asians are going and studying in those sectors, that's why. Right, but the, but sure, but like, I mean, you're just but, begging the question. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not, no, I'm not begging the question. What I'm saying is this here: uh, Why are more white? Why are they? No, 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 why no, are they no, going I into should, sciences and not? Oh, I mean, like, why are why, Asians succeeding I, 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 in science? I, I want the Texas. Whereas a, Africans aren't. I, I want the Texas A&M. Why are more whites in agriculture? Uh, we have a natural, you know, tendency to do that. I don't no, know. No, you don't. First of all, you're black people actually out, out there sitting picking cotton. Please black people created agriculture. No, but well, we damn sure did the work. But here's my whole point okay. here. Here's my whole point, which I'm trying to get you to understand. Okay. If you have more whites who are going into agriculture, again, I'm a Texas a and University graduate. I grew up in Texas. Okay, where? Uh, in Dallas. Okay, that, which part of Dallas? Uh, the white part. Which well, which part? There's a lot of white parts in Dallas. Uh, just uh, Preston Hollow. Yeah, yeah. I, I see exactly why, where your thought process comes from. Mm. Uh, that's, why, that's why you have the white country clubs there as well, because they don't want other people in there. Mm. But again, are there black uh, churches? Getting, black uh, country clubs? Are the black churches? Uh, black no, they have black country clubs where you have black people who play. Uh, but also, aren't there black institutions that are like just what? for you? No, it's not just for us. Because the fact of the matter black is, black churches. Those are just for you guys. No, actually, no. no that's no, great. It's, actually, but actually, no, it's not. Because because there are black churches where you can come if you want to, doesn't matter. And just like, just like you have a white church, churches. you can come. That's my point, but that's what it is. So you're factually incorrect. Here's my whole point. When I talk about agriculture, all, all there I'm are more whites who are going into agriculture. Why? Because that's the area they're going into. So if Asians are going into a particular area, that's where they're going. You're, you're begging the question. All I'm saying is, why are Asians succeeding at these technical fields? Because why they're working is it? in it. It, because they're again, you're just begging questions. Like at some no, point, why, have, why are whites succeeding I'll, I'll, in agriculture? Can you let me finish. I'll, I'll ultimately get to this. The, it's, it's about human nature, and it's about their unique gifts. Asians are Asians unique, have a unique gifts. Yes, East Asians have a higher, on average, IQ than Europeans. It's remarkable. It doesn't surprise me that they succeed at math. Uh, they succeed in science. Oh, that's a terrible stereotype. No, no, How no, no. I'm not using stereotypes. It is what it is. All I'm saying is here, Richard. The fact of the matter is here. This is this is is actually why I would uh, I would want to restrict immigration of East Asians. It's not because I think I'm, I'm afraid of them. I actually respect them. This, I respect their civilization. It's about protecting my people. That's it, it, what it's but, about. But here's the people. When you keep saying my people, then you say all Americans when well, you're not talking about it. Here's, here's, here's the reality, Richard. The reality is here. You have to navigate Rich, between the, people you I got care you. about and all I got citizens. you. Here's the deal, Richard. We're not going anywhere. And see, Richard, it's, gonna be, it's about to be a little tough for you. About to be a little, little tough for you, Richard, because see, you and your people have had a great head start. Tremendous head start. Twenty odd Africans arriving in 1619 Who and gave us this one, 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 one second. We 16, did. 16. No, well, you, you, but see, that's what I'm saying. When you have a head start, it means you're scared to compete. See, I know some other whites out there who are not white nationalists, who are not afraid of competition, who are not afraid of this. But here's the reality: we're not going anywhere. Right. And you might want to suck that up. And I know it's rough. I know it's rough. But I suggest what you should do. What we're doing, Richard, is preparing your generation for a world of competition where you have to actually, where you don't get the head start your mom and daddy gave. You uh -huh. that you're gonna start uh, maybe not 80 yards ahead, but 30. But you know what? You may want to train harder because we're training harder, and we gonna catch up. We're gonna win, and also you're not gonna win, Mr. Richard. Martin. I want to tell you, you've got to prepare yourself. You've dealt with a bunch of guilt-ridden, silly whites no. all your life, and no. we are waking up. We are recognizing who we are, and we see an amazing future. Hey, Richard, so I'm you better get Richard, ready. I'm gonna tell you right now, Richard. Here's the deal. 1619, 20-odd Africans arrived, Fort Comfort, Virginia, mm -hmm. okay, 1619, 397 years ago. Mm -hmm. Trust me, we're resilient, we're not going anywhere, I, and I'm going to tell you yes. right here, and, and as, as my frat brother Vertner Woodson Tandy said, 1937, we will fight until hell freezes over, and then we will fight on the ice. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands.
Thanks so much. Oh, to be a white congressman in America. Iowa Steve King continues to showcase his white nationalist beliefs in response to a tweet he posted over the weekend that drew major condemnation from Republicans and Democrats, even though two of the black Republicans in Congress have been quite silent on this. Y'all, other people's babies, he's talking about y'all. In an interview with an Iowa radio station on Monday, King took issue with recent comments by, made by Univision anchor Jorge Ramos about whites becoming the minority in America within 30 years. Jorge Ramos' stock and trade is to identify and try and drive wedges between race, race and ethnicity, I should say, to be more correct. And when you start accentuating the differences, then you end up with people that are at each other's throats. And he's adding up Hispanics and blacks, and he predicts will be in greater number than whites in America. I will predict the Hispanics and the blacks will be fighting each other before that happens. Boy, that's stupid. Later, King went on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox News to discuss, uh, again, the controversy. And it's no shock that Tucker Carlson would defend Steve King's racist tweets and his white nationalist views. So we're at this place now in America where we're seeing people marching in the streets that are pushing back against the American culture and the American civilization. And it's troubling to me that over the last 25 years, we've essentially phased out the, the promotion of assimilation and we promoted instead multiculturalism and diversity as if it were our strength. And in fact, they're using it now to divide us. And that's what Barack Obama did throughout his presidency. Everything you said I, I think is defensible and probably right. The problem with the tweet was that it suggested there's a racial component to American identity. Well, it was no shock Tucker Carlson would say that. But if you want to understand Tucker Carlson, if y'all want to understand what it means to be white in America, he had a failed show on PBS canceled, failed show on CNN canceled, failed show on MSNBC canceled, and he still got another show on Fox News. Boy, it must be good to be a white man in America to have that many failures. Show me somebody black or Hispanic who had three shows that got canceled and got another one, or even two, or even one. All right, joining us from Whitefish, Montana, white nationalist Richard Spencer, president of the National Policy Institute, uh, Radix Journal. Of course, he also uh, is an uh, alt-right leader. So, Richard, I, you must love uh, Congressman Steve King because he's right up your alley. Right. Steve King said nothing wrong, and he said a lot right. Like what? Well, the basic concept of his tweet, his offending tweet, which is we cannot build a civilization with other people's babies, is exactly correct. And that is European civilization is intrinsically linked to Europeans. Are we, it is are not we in some free-floating value system that we could uh, project onto other peoples. Rich, it is ours. It comes from us. Richard, you're in, you're in Whitefish, Montana, right? That's where I'm right now. Uh, yeah. Which country in Europe is that located in? Oh, not this again. No, no, no. But you keep saying European values. I'm asking again, are you in Europe right now or are you in the United States of America? Roland, um, when I say a word like Africa or Europe, uh, that can both mean the continent, that is the, the geographic place, or it could mean the race of people who oh. emerged, who evolved on those continents. Oh, gotcha. So, okay, all right. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm when just I'm saying checking. European, it is it is a reference to white people. Gotcha. Okay, but you could just say white people because you could actually be white and not from Europe and still be called. So that's what I'm trying to understand. Right. So also, Europeans but were but here's what's interesting: when you talk about other people's babies, uh, you do know that there have been significant advances in this country as a result of other people's babies being in this country. You look at what's happening in Silicon Valley right now. You look at uh, of course, the African-American experience. In fact, when you talk about even white folks who came from other countries, y'all also came from somewhere else. So you're other people's babies. Uh, yes. I mean, yes and no. I mean, look, in terms of just Silicon yes yes. Valley, that, that, that you know, idea that you just put out there, I mean, 95% of the entrepreneurs who are, you know, really successful, multimillionaires under 40, 95% of them are white. Um, in terms of, look, all of these amazing inventions and things that have changed our lives, I mean, these are derived from our people. Who, who, um, who, who's, who's our people? 
uh, white people. Okay, but I'm right now, but when you have advances right now in Silicon Valley, when you look at what's happening uh, with technology, uh, even when you look at right now uh, of the young folks uh, who are scoring high in STEM, 83% of them don't look like you. So our Look, future, that's... so our future actually is, is pretty bright because of other people's babies. And here's the other piece, Richard. We're not going anywhere. It doesn't. So y'all might want to. But here's the deal. Y'all might. You can't blame black people and Hispanic people because white people in America one stopped having babies, and two. You I, can't, I don't. You can't blame. blame you can't Hispanic. blame. You can't blame black people and Hispanics also for the opioid addiction, where white folks are dropping dead at a higher rate than anybody else. Y'all on the painkillers, not us. What, there are a lot of problems within the white community. I would never deny that at all. The, the, the fundamental point, and this is the point that was truly radical and truly right about what Steve King said, is that culture and civilization are intrinsically connected to race. Indeed, they're derived from race. What culture so, is that? Sure, we could have a ton of intelligent Asians or Indians come to America and do great in STEM or, or whatever, but it, they're going to create a different culture and different civilization. But here's the deal, though, Richard, that Richard, is, that is, question. That's an idea that he put forward, although he wasn't really able to articulate it and, and, and stick with it. Well, if he, can, he also if, said if, later that, oh, we need to adopt the world's, cho the world's children and turn them into Americans and things like that. So well, Steve he, King, not everything he said is correct. But in that tweet, the reason why it became a controversy is because he was getting at something, that this is our culture. Well, actually, here's the deal, though. You don't actually have a culture without other people in this country. You don't have one. I mean, without other people's babies, when you say our culture, you don't have it. Well, I mean, okay. I, 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 no, no, I, I can tell, I can tell you, us. I can tell you, without black folks and music, you don't have a culture. Uh, without, when you look at food, when you look at dance, see, when one says culture, that means a whole lot of stuff, and not what you're talking about. So, final Look, comment. I, Go ahead. I will final agree comment. Agree with you that very often races will engage in what you could say is cultural appropriation. If you look at Japan, its alphabet came from China, and much no, more actually, came. Let's from talk China. about America. But there's okay. If you want to talk about the white race, uh, something like the guitar. So much of food is is in a way t elements of it are taken from other cultures. But there's a spirit or stolen it. or stolen. It, no, stolen is actually a very wrong way to think about it. This is like Afrocentrism of so, like, who, stole so, so who took the, so who took the guitar? White folks took the guitar from somebody else, or did black people take the guitar from white people? I'm just curious. Right, but it's not stealing. It's it's appropriating the oh, sense. Okay. Of, there's a spirit behind it that we make something our own. Okay. That's in a way what makes a people is that spiritual sense that we can take elements of other things and create them. Well, the I, fact I, is. American culture, sure, there are elements from other peoples, elements from Africa, there are elements from uh, Native American cultures, but there's this European spirit that defined right. it, that brought it all together. Well, I'll tell you what, though, when you, you brought the guitar, the greatest guitarist to ever walk this planet is Prince. He's other people's babies. Richard Spencer, we appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.